hello hello god bless god bless in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit god bless hello my name is joani i'm a prophet of god through our lord and savior jesus christ amen welcome all right i have two messages for you to deliver okay and you know all right excuse the hair i had to do a double process and I had to do a double process, and now I look like a Targaryen, basically, all right? Especially when it's wet and curtain. So that's that's been fun. But I have two messages for you. And your first message, all right? Holy Spirit, lead the way. Your first message is that God gave you either a gift, um, an ability, an authority, and the specific message is, God didn't tell you to do that. God did not tell you to do that, all right? And I'm going to give you the scripture, and then I'm going to give you some more context, all right? And this is 1 Corinthians 6, judgment by the saints. Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we judge, that we shall judge the angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak to your shame. It is so that there is no wise man among you. No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. But brother goeth to law with brother, and that before and that before the unbelievers. Now therefore, there is utterly a fault among you, because ye go to a law one with another. Why do why do ye why do ye not rather take wrong? Why do ye rather not suffering not suffer yourselves to be defrauded, nay ye do wrong, and defrauded, and that your brethren. Know ye that your unrighteous, unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, and ye are sanctified. But ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus, and by the Spirit of our God. <sighs> Judgment by the saints. All right. God gave you an ability. God gave you a gift or an authority. That's how brief I'm going to keep it, and you apply it where it goes. And God did not tell you to do that. Why is that? <sighs> because God did give me a, aside from receiving the Holy Spirit, right? And, and being able to be a prophet, which is a messenger, which is the mouth, mouthpiece for God, right? Um, I do have other gifts. I do have other talents. I, I'm, I'm one very, very, hallelujah, gifted individual. Thank you, Lord. And I don't always use my talents to its highest potential. Sometimes I do. With that said, there's one specific gift that I have. And it's such a, a specific ability that I couldn't wait. Oh, I couldn't wait to... Um, you know, here's the thing about, about, about these supernatural gifts. These supernatural gifts, um, when when they come into the physical world, oh my gosh, they they, I want to say they plow through anything, right? Uh, because they're gifted by God. They're gifted by by the highest, right? They're they're gifted by, by by the living God, right? By by the ultimate, true, and eternal. Like he is he is highest of the highest. He is Lord of Lords, King of Kings. Like it's coming from the top. Hallelujah. I'm telling you it's top tier. That's what I'm trying to say. When this, this supernatural gift is so top tier that when it comes into or it manifests into the physical world, nothing can stop it. No, nothing can stop it. A lot, a lot of, uh, you'll, you'll notice when it, when it's a divine gift from God, 
sometimes there's there's maybe like oppression i don't know if i want to say oppression or suppression but there are forces trying to slow down the will of god and i have this supernatural gift and i went to go do something and i said i can't fucking wait forgive my language i can't wait oh my god and then finally i took it to god i did everything i needed to do and then i took it to god and god said how dare you how dare you abuse this gift how dare you take up this matter before the law of the unjust the ones who don't even follow their own laws aren't you qualified to even you're a saint you will judge even the angels so what makes you think that you're not qualified to judge even the smallest matters and god said i didn't tell you to do that because i can hear god right why why should i listen to man when i when i can hear god when i can hear higher instruction right when i can when i can when when i have an angel that has been sent to me with higher knowing to lead my footsteps amen god did not tell you to do that all right there was there was something that i was going to do specifically and remember that everything that god anything that an enemy does God will use it for your good, all right? Whatever an enemy does, God will use it for your good. And that's where I had to like have faith. Yes, God might have gave me this gift. Yes, I, I might have been able to, I don't wanna say like like moral combat, like finish him, right? It, it's it's that type of gift where I was, it was complete slaughter fest. I had, I had all, all the, the cards in the deck to make it happen. I knew everything that I needed. Like I had everything in place that if I really wanted to, I could. And then God said, I did not tell you to do that. There's a limitation. I don't want to say there's a limitation to your power, but there is a limitation that if you if you surpass or you abuse this spiritual gift if you would abuse this position of authority in any kind of way understand that the lord will come back for it and you have to understand that that's going to corrupt your heart that's why you cannot overstep that boundary hallelujah amen all right that, that's what i'm telling you that that god did not tell you to do that all right you don't think that the saints had enough power to have the Holy Spirit with the fire of God in their eyes just choke someone out every time someone did them wrong? No, they could. Easily. Easily. Even I saw it for myself and I was pleading for this person, even though they did me wrong. Lord, stop, please, no. Let them breathe, Lord. But someone wicked says no. Crush their throat. Oh my God. Be very careful with the power the authority, the spiritual gift. God did not tell you to do that, all right? Yes, you can judge certain matters, but don't 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 overdo it, all right? Because I was just about to overdo something, and was I afraid that it was going to nip me in the butt? Mm. Mm. We're going to leave that alone. I'd rather just say that that God said I saw that. God said I did not tell you to do that. This is what I told you to do. This is how far I told you to take it. I did not tell you to take it even that far. And he sent an angel to confirm that to me. All right. So that, that's your scripture for that. Now, the second message is a message of warning. And it comes from Acts. Acts 5. Ananias and Sapphira. So let me read it first and then I'll give you the message. Ananias and Sapphira. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession. Before I say anything else, in another text it says maybe sold a piece of the land. Sold a possession. So this married couple sold a possession. Continuing. And kept back kept back part of the price his wife also being privy to it 
and brought, brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and keep back part of the, of the price of the land? Whiles it remained, was it not thine own? After it was sold, was it not thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all of them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out, and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, Ye, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at thy door, and shall carry thee out. Then she fell down straight away at his feet, and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead, and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church, and upon as many as heard these things things. <sighs> Specifically, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? When it was yours, when it was yours, wasn't it your own? Wasn't it in your own power to do whatever you wanted with it? When it was your, when it was yours, didn't you have full authority to to do as you please. I don't know if someone's buying something. This is this was the message. I don't know if someone's either buying a if you're buying a piece of land. If you're buying a piece of land specifically, what when in my in my experience, when I bought my first house, right, ev everyone's involved. The realtor, the other realtor, uh the broker, the mortgage company, everyone's involved. If you're buying something like that, make sure that you get a um, a private surveyor to, and don't tell anyone, don't tell either party you're entitled to that. Um, yeah, sure, it might cost an additional, like, it shouldn't cost more than 500 bucks, maybe 300 at the least. But the survey of the land, just so you know the perimeter specifically, this is, this is for someone. Um... They might be holding back a piece of the land to themselves, like a parcel. I need to say that, like a parcel of the land. Because um, they don't want to give it up completely. Some or, 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 if it's not a piece of land, you are buying a possession from someone. I don't know if this is a contract or what, but they, they want to, they intend to still maintain some control of their possession. Um, they're, they're not... Why did you hold back thy price? And th you have to understand that this couple, this couple is in agreement with doing this. And how, how dare they? How dare they bring forth? It's like stealing. I swear it's like stealing. It's in, it's Holy Spirit. How dare you? Holy Spirit, God is om omnipotent. He knows all things. How dare you? It's like someone is, is uh, selling you something. And in the back of their hand, they're not giving you either the, the full material. They're not giving you uh, full disclosure of, of like what you're entitled to. Because you have to understand, as someone who has purchased a lot of, I guess, when, when I was balling, I always looked for items that were I always knew, that were always rare, um, that, that yielded right uh, high... I can't even think of the term right now. I'm so sorry. They have a high return regardless, right? Like they don't depreciate in Yes, certain assets depreciate in value, but not this. You have to understand, I don't know what you're buying, but when you buy something new, you know that you're entitled to a lot of warranties, right? Um, there's someone who is holding back something specifically. The word initially came through about land. Get a private surveyor to go into 
county land records and to find out the exact perimeter. Why? Because in, in my experience, when I purchased a certain amount of acreage, my neighbor actually owned the, uh, the entryway. He owned the entryway. And if he really wanted to be an asshole, he would say, you're driving up my land and I wouldn't be able to have access to my own house. Right. And when it comes to the law, they don't care. It's it, the law is unjust for the most part. Right. Well, how dare you take a matter up before the law of the unjust rather than taking it to the saints or even the least esteemed of the church? <sighs> Holy Spirit. Wow. What, whatever transaction you're about to make, understand that that Satan has filled this person. Um, and they still they don't want to relinquish control. That's the exact word. They do not want to relinquish control. Although that's what the Lord is saying. That's what the saint is saying. That's what St. Peter said. Although when you had it and when it was in your possession, didn't you have all freedoms to do what you pleased? Um, and they agreed. Yes. So so then why is it so hard to, to let go? It's like uh, when you're buying, I don't know, when you're buying a, a car from someone, right? And they relinquish the title and they sign over the title to you, right? You pay them. The car's yours, right? You you have full freedom to, to do as you please with the car, to register the car, to even gift the car, right? It's like uh, someone's trying to maintain some kind of some kind of authority, and this is why is this dangerous? Because at one point they can come back and ask for more money. At one point they can try and what what's the exact word? I don't want to say coerce. That's not that's not the word. It's like uh how how do I not know these gangster terms? I should know this stuff. I'm so sorry. It's like when someone's trying to shake you down for money. It, it it's very it's it almost seems very like gang affiliated. That's how this person's thinking. It's Satan. It's it's Satan. Satan has filled this person. And they have and you know what the oh my god, Holy Spirit. These might even be like like church people. These might even be people who try to come across as holy. These, these are people who have, you know, sometimes, right? This is exactly what I, I could tell you straight up. I don't like church people. I hate going to church sometimes. Oh my God. People who have their nose so high up in the air that they think they can do no wrong, right? And the Lord already said it. <laughs> Heaven doesn't rejoice when, when these people that are already righteous think they're saved. No, heaven rejoices when, when sinners come forward. So you have to understand that this, these, it, it's, it's very fake. This is a, a warning message that there's someone who is coming across very, very innocent, very nice. Like they have the best interest for you, um, that it's going to be a great transaction. It's like, uh, they're, if they're going to sell it to you, it's going to be a great sales pitch. And th this is something that is worthy to be sold, right? It's, it's something that you want to acquire, um, in, in part of your assets or your portfolio, whatever it is. You're going to want it like, yes, but you need to be careful because this person, you know, make sure you have all bases covered. How do you, how do you have all bases covered as, and land transactions are so, there's a lot of things we don't know, especially like, right. When you're a newbie and that's not like your forte or your realm, right? You, you put full faith and, and trust in the people who are handling all these all this paperwork, all all it takes is for you to pay someone to do a survey privately. And you don't have to tell shit to no one. And when there's a discrepancy, hallelujah, that's the word I was looking for. There's going to be a discrepancy in the matter. When there is a discrepancy and you're, it's going to be revealed, all right? This person, the Holy Ghost is going to come through, all right? And they're going to, they're... <sighs> do I believe that they're going to die? I'm going to leave that one alone because if that matter is brought to someone who does have, who has the Holy Ghost, right? Like me, who has received the Holy Spirit and someone came up to me to judge a matter and they lied in that, in, in, in that type of way. And the Holy Spirit came and says, this person's lying. And then they confess it to you because who am I going to believe? Am I going to believe the Holy Spirit or am I going to believe the, the lying man? I'm going to believe the Holy Spirit in all ways, right? Um, 
And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. It's the spirit of God. It's it's the spirit of, of divine judgment, love, and, and all the other things that, that God is. So how can I believe filthy man? If this person, if this person tries to attempt such a transaction with someone like, like me, they ran across the wrong one. They might just have a heart attack and die right on the spot. I need to say palpitation. Like, they're going to be so, like, with the confrontation or, like, them being confronted of their own lie, they're going to start to sweat. They're going to start, that's what I'm feeling. It Like, like they're they're nervous. Their heart's going to stop. Like, they, they can't even, they're going to drop. Especially when it comes to someone like that. Now, if you're following God and you're like, God, allow the Holy Spirit as I'm doing this transaction to, to guide me, to cover me, to... It, it, I, I received your profit, right? If you receive a profit, what do you receive? A profit's reward. If you receive a profit, you receive a profit's reward. Lord, I received your profit's word. Okay? So that means I'm supposed to receive... A, I received the profit's word, so I'm supposed to receive a profit's reward. Lord, make it come to pass. Lord, make sure that this is, this is all right. Make it just. Make it fair. Especially nowadays... I, I don't I don't know who needs to hear this, but I'm not it's no secret that the cost of living today is insane. And you have to understand that with the prices of everything going up, I can I can completely understand why even even saying that something's half a million dollars might seem like a good deal. I don't know why I have to say that. I, I don't know who's looking at what, but even saying that something is, dang, you know what? At four hundred and fifty thousand dollars, that's actually not bad. And little do you know, little do you know that it's it's severely overpriced. And because these demons are all trying to make their commission, because these demons are all trying to, you know, they think they have. It, this is exactly why when I purchase a new car. I never purchased a new car like on a whim, like, I want this car, I'm getting it. No, it took me eight months just to buy a new car. I want this one. Oh, well, they have it for this price. Oh, we don't know how, blah, blah, I don't care. All right, then buy. Because they thought they were going to waste my time. They thought they were going to play my games with me, right, to make the most. Oh, you know, you don't know what you're saying. The market's going to blah, blah. You can't tell the future. What I'm telling you is that right now, this is what I'm offering. And if, if you don't want to put in that price, then let me find someone else who will advocate for me for this price. I, I, I don't know, but you know as well as I do that we're living in, in 2024 and the prices of everything has everyone, the, the, the inflation rates have everyone really questioning what is worth what. And you have to understand that it, it really isn't to that price. All right, it really is not at that price. That's a scripture. It's Acts, I believe it's Acts 5. Ananias and Sapphira. They will they God sees what they're doing. They are filled with Satan. They are both in accordance. Are they privy to it? Oh yeah, sure. That that's how that's how simple it is to do wrong. To be in accordance with, hey, do you mind making another, you know, two percent? Hey, do you mind if we like, you know, we could get away with jacking up the price a little bit because everyone else is doing it and I, it's, it's, it's so like, it's so subtle. It's going to be so, so subtle. Yeah. You know, we're, we're okay with that. Hey, you know, you know that, uh, if we keep this, we could actually sell it to another buyer and let them under their illusion, you know, keep them under the illusion that they're purchasing all of this, but eh, it'll be in the paperwork. It's going to be so subtle like that. Don't let someone tempt you into doing wrong. It, it's that simple as someone saying, Hey, uh, I could actually make you twice the money, and it actually sounds pretty good. You're scheming. That that was the word. So, someone's scheming and plotting, right? And, and it's so subtle. Um, and you could get in trouble for that. It, when you're righteous, you're like, nah. Like, like just make sure that they know that we're gonna keep this part of the land, and that they're not gonna be entitled to that. That this is the only portion we're selling to them, and they might even still be up for it. Hey, you know, we heard that the rates are are at this price, and um, you know, we, we, we're going to go with, with this because that's what the, the competitive rate is all around. And just to make sure that we are, you know, we're not undermining the competition. We're neither above the competition. We're, we're, we're right in line. Make sure to cover your bases. 
I, I don't know who this is for. These are your words of warning. Um, I do have other messages for you. So I love you so much with the love of Christ. I hope this was helpful. Lord, I hope I delivered your message unto your people as you needed to. I gave them everything you gave me. It was specifically land, but the text says possession. All right. So bye. Love you. Good luck.